Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with New Orleans-based jazz bassist Quinn Sternberg. He has an interesting new 2020 CD out now called Mine Beach, and he talks about it. He's originally from Bloomington, Indiana, and since graduating with a jazz studies degree from Indiana University's Jacobs School of Music in 2016, he has been performing music full-time on the local scene, on tour, and as a recording artist. He plays both the electric and upright bass, and he performs in musical styles like jazz, rock, funk, hip-hop, soul, Latin, folk, and more. So please get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Okay. Hey, Quinn, thanks for taking a minute up for Neon Jazz today, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, man, my pleasure. So talk to me about Mind Beach. I really dig this album, but I want to know from you, what was your, what was your overarching vision with this project? So this was kind of like a, a new band put together in New Orleans with a lot of material I've written since getting there, but also a couple old tunes that I had on the back burner for a while. I think the vibe of the music is kind of folk-inspired melodies with kind of rhythmic figures that I've kind of heard since moving to the city. And I guess the name Mind Beach itself is kind of exploring this thought about introspection it's kind of like, uh, I guess your your mind can be a very meditative place, but also chaotic. So I think these songs are kind of very peaceful on the surface, but with kind of a brooding intensity underneath. That was the plan. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I, I feel it. So you're in New Orleans. Where, where are you born and raised? I'm from Bloomington, Indiana. Grew up there, went to school there, and moved to New Orleans pretty much right after graduating been there for about four years now so who were your musical influences growing up who'd you listen to that really got you going um it was a lot of different people my parents kind of listened to a lot of classic rock so i was very into like bob dylan neil young those kind of artists but when i started getting into uh, the black american music jocko was kind of an in for me i played a lot of electric bass and that was the first kind of improvised artist who really stuck me in. From there, I kind of found kind of Blue and Clifford Brown. Kind of went forward from there. When you did actually go to college, it seems like that's always kind of the, the, the place where all the jazz dreams really start taking flight. So what kind of mentors did you have that, that really kind of helped you along the way? There are a few, a lot of good figures. The Indiana University has a pretty supportive faculty i mean the main one for me was my bass teacher jeremy allen who is a really really good educator kind of caters to the individual but it was really influential working with david baker he was um i believe his last year teaching was my freshman year but i got just through meeting him briefly i had a lot of chance to work on with him i was in his Abersol combo one year and got to go to his um, Ravinia workshop in Chicago. So a lot of the chances I got to hang with him and opportunities I got through him were really beneficial. Um, had a lot of good times working with Steve Howden. I got to play in a combo that kind of played with Dave Stryker and played his music that, that I found really helpful as well. When you were growing up, did you always think you wanted to grow up to be a musician, or did you have other other dreams? Um, I kind of got that idea pretty early to be a musician. Pretty ignorant idea at first. I just took piano lessons and would pretend to practice when my dad left the house, but I just had this idea that it would ultimately be the thing I took seriously, and luckily it seems to be working out so far. So what was one of the first live jazz shows you ever saw? Let me think about that. I guess one of the first ones that really resonated with me was actually Astral Project, which is a famous New Orleans kind of all-star quartet. They came to Bloomington one year, and that I really enjoyed the energy and the interaction. Seeing James Singleton play at a young age was really awesome. It, it's cool to be in New Orleans now. That was kind of a one that I found really impactful at a young age. 
So how has being in New Orleans, and I mean, it, you know, and I think about that from Kansas City, you know, it's one of the yeah. original cradles of jazz. How has that influenced the way you approach jazz? I think it's uh, one thing for sure is the emphasis on rhythm in New Orleans, very much a, a feel city where the, the definitive hard line on the music is making it feel good. And I think in some other scenes, it, it can be a bit more of an intellectualized, music and I like a lot of things coming out of that school as well but I think it's the focus on hard driving groove has been really important there and just melodicism not always in stayed in the most complex way There's so why do you of, love jazz? I really I think improvisation is kind of I play a lot of different types of music and still enjoy listening to everything but as a player, I think the improvised component is probably the kind of the thing I want in any kind of band I play in. And I guess this concept that everyone can be feeding off each other simultaneously to create something exactly in the moment is very exciting for me. And when, when everyone's really meshing, those are probably my most meaningful playing experiences. Everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? That's a good question. Uh, I guess I'm just kind of a guy. <laughs> it's hard to say um, what statement. I mean, as a musician, I think I'm a person who can bring some creative ideas to a lot of contexts. But on a personal level, roaming around New Orleans, trying to hear as much good music as I can, take as many naps as I can when I'm not working on music, eating good food. I don't need too much else than that. Got a lot of good friends who I enjoy spending time with. I don't know that my uh, personal description of myself would be anything too profound. Well, let's do this. I, I like that explanation, but let me just ask you one final question. It's this. What do you like right. best about being a professional musician? What I like best is that you're constantly working on things that are deeply important to you in collaboration with other people who share the same importance. And I think the moments where, as a team, you can kind of create something really special and the audience kind of understands that as well, I think the communal joy that comes from that is is a really beautiful thing. I don't I think it's fairly unique to to the job. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Absolutely. Hey Quinn, thanks for opening up about Mind Beach and your life in jazz, man. I appreciate you taking some time out for me today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New Orleans, Indiana, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Quinn for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.